Hey guys, Erica here and welcome back to Black Girls Build 2. So today's episode is going to be a little different than normal. Today we're going to be talking about the five things I wish I knew before we bought our first home. Alright, so a little background. My husband and I purchased our first home in 2019, but we actually started the process in 2017. So at that time we found a realtor, we met with her and she walked us through the process and everything that we needed to do to purchase a home. And from that conversation, we decided that a new construction home was the best fit for our family and our situation. So this video, I'm going to focus on some of the things that we learned after the process that I wish that we knew before getting started. All right, so let's get started with number one, which is picking the right lot. So when we came out to look up a lot and decide on the one that we wanted to purchase, our only thought process was that we didn't want to be adjacent to a main road. We were thinking in terms of safety and having children play, and that is how we selected our lot. However, we did not pay attention to the amount of slope on the yard or the amount of rocks. So being able to grow grass and do landscaping, maybe building a jungle gym or playhouse for my daughter is all gonna be very hard to do without investing more money to flatten out our yard space. So when you come to pick out your lot, walk your lot, make sure it is gonna meet your family's needs and then make your choice. All right, so that brings me to number two, which is to be smart about your upgrades. So no matter how nice your buildings are, keep in mind this is a business and they are trying to make money. So a lot of the upgrades that they will offer will be offered at a very steep markup. So for example, things like your faucets or your doorknobs or light fixtures are all things that you can do later on down the road for a fraction of the cost. In fact, I changed out all of these things myself and I saved a ton of money doing that. So some of the things that we chose to upgrade were things that we couldn't reasonably do ourselves, or it would take a lot of money, time, and effort. So for example, we chose to upgrade electrical wiring. So we wired for in-ceiling speakers, or we strategically placed outlets in places that we knew we wanted to mount TVs. Another thing that our builder recommended that we chose not to do was to upgrade our countertops. So they quoted us $10,000 to do granite countertops, and I am just not a fan of granite. It takes so much time and effort to maintain, and it's very easy to damage. Well, that's a whole video for a whole nother time. Anyway, it was not worth our budget on the countertops, but if that is something that you are interested in and you really want to do, make sure you get quotes and estimates to make sure that your builder is quoting you a reasonable price for that service. If they're not, that is something that I would skip out on upgrading and just hire someone later on down the road. All right, and number three is you wanna ask questions and advocate for yourself. So even though this is a new construction, we still had a home inspector come and just verify that our builder did a proper job with meeting code and regulations. So although we love our building, we had a very pleasant experience. Our home inspector found a list of things that they needed to correct in order for us to close on our house. The other thing is when we were doing our walkthrough, this was actually a whole walk and we just felt that it was so closed off and we hated it. So we had to advocate for ourselves and really ask our builder and contractor to open up this wall for us, which they were able to do without any added cost. And the other example is when we had our furniture delivered, our delivery guys posed the concern that our front door did not seem to be installed properly. And instead of overlooking that comment, we actually went back to the builder and asked questions and that is where they admitted to us that they put in the wrong size door and that it was installed improperly and they came back and resolved that issue. So if anything doesn't seem right, don't hold that to yourself. This is your money and you deserve to have the highest quality home that you deserve. All right, and that brings us to number four, which is ask for a leftover and sample materials. So our builder was kind enough to leave behind some sample flooring for us. And why that is important is because one of my projects will be extending our floors into our master bedroom. Having this sample and being able to go in the store to match it is going to make that process easier. You can even take that a step further and ask for the brand and names of all the materials that were used in your home. So if you ever needed to replace them, you will know exactly where to go to find them. Now, the last part of this is the paint. So make sure to ask for the leftover 
were paying for your house. So I am standing in front of a wall and I'm currently working on a project and I hope that the camera will show you this stark contrast between the two paint colors. But when we built our home, we asked for agreeable gray Sherwin-Williams eggshell. So I literally went to the store and asked for just that and we got completely different color paint than what is on our walls. So we are not able to do any touch up paint, which makes my life a living hell while doing DIY projects. So one of the things that you can do is any leftover paint from your home, you can ask your builder to keep that and have that just in case you need to touch up any paint in your house. All right, we made it to the end to number five, which is use your warranty period wisely. So most builders will offer you a warranty period. Our period was one year where they would come back and fix things within your house during that period. So no matter how small or big the issue is, you want to call them during that year period. So for example, our HVAC system was not working properly. We had them come fix it. If a faucet is leaking or not draining properly, they they should fix it. Nail pops, paint chips, if the countertop is coming off the wall, it doesn't matter, call them. Even if the problem is small, it could grow into something larger down the road. And if it's outside of that one year warranty, you are left foot in the bill and you have already spent too much money for this house. We're talking three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars for your home. And you want to make sure that those things are taken care of. All right, so those were the five things that we wish we knew before buying our home. But if you have things that you would like to add, help somebody out and leave it down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way to help us to continue to grow. But as always, be strong, be courageous. And in this case, go out and buy that house. See y'all next time.